Yes, when we look at Turkey, uh, the main issue uh, that will determine uh, domestic dynamics at least uh, is going to be the economy because uh, for long uh, Turkey has had uh, a very sound economic performance uh, growth averaging around 5% in the last decade uh, but uh, very recently uh, that growth has, uh, has come down significantly uh, and now we're looking uh, at a period uh, of uh, economic contraction. Uh, that is going to be something uh, very new uh, for uh, Turkish society, at least since uh, 2001 when uh, the last crisis happened. And this is going to have implications. It's going to have implications not only on the economic side, but also on the political side uh, with uh, local elections coming in March 2019. Uh, so, uh, basically, uh, a lot of the domestic focus uh, will be on the economy. Externally, uh, surely, the, uh, one of the main priority areas will be Syria. Uh, Turkey uh, will want to see, uh, in 2019, uh, a settlement, uh, a political settlement in Syria, uh, so that uh, there can be uh, some sense of normalcy uh, in Syria. Uh, and Turkey has a few conditions there, uh, particularly regarding uh, the presence uh, of uh, the Syrian Kurds in the northeast of the country. Uh, the two leaders, uh, Trump and Erdogan, uh, restarted their dialogue. Uh, so there is, uh, at least for the uh, short term, uh, a, an improvement in the bilateral relationship. However, given that we are talking about 2019, uh, there are still a number of major disagreements between Turkey and the US uh, that will come to the fore in 2019. Well, it is, uh, Turkey does not reassess its role in NATO. Uh, Turkey has been a NATO member since 1952 uh, and remains one of the uh, you know, strongest members of NATO. Having said that, uh, at the public level, because of these major disagreements with the United States, uh, there certainly is a growing suspicion towards NATO. So uh, when, you, when I look at the polls, for instance, uh, support for NATO is at an all-time low. Uh, but again, this does not get replicated uh, in the official uh, policy because uh, the Turkish uh, political and diplomatic elites uh, know very well the security benefits uh, of being uh, under uh, the NATO umbrella. Well, I think uh, there certainly is um, a dimension of regional political influence uh, in uh, Turkey's uh, relationship with Saudi Arabia. Uh, where since the beginning, especially since the uh, Arab Spring, uh, the two countries find themselves uh, at different ends uh, of uh, the political chessboard uh, with uh, the Turkish government heavily supporting the Muslim Brotherhood, uh, primarily in Egypt but also Nahda in Tunisia, uh, and uh, whereas Saudi Arabia uh, was you know, very reactive to that policy. So that's really uh, you know, the major uh, disagreement between Turkey and Saudi Arabia at the time. Uh, which uh, tended to uh, impact the bilateral relationship. Of course, the Kashyyykci murder uh, brought a new dimension uh, to this, uh, and there the Turkish government uh, has uh, indeed uh, looked at this crisis uh, with two objectives. The first objective uh, is certainly uh, to uh, minimize uh, the, the influence uh, of not only Saudi Arabia, but also the Crown Prince, uh, Mohammed bin Salman, uh, but also uh, the second dimension is to earn political capital in Washington. So it's, we shouldn't see this just as a bilateral issue between Turkey and Saudi Arabia. Uh, the Kashyyykci murder also created an environment uh, where because of uh, the US or more most particularly Trump's relationship uh, with the Crown Prince, it has also created a, a situation where the Turkey-US relationship started to be affected. And uh, the way that uh, the Turkish government and, and President Erdogan has managed this relationship, uh, there was a, also a goal of earning political capital in the United States with Trump, uh, so that Turkey uh, could uh, be in a uh, more influential position 
while it's trying to negotiate its own disagreements with the United States that we talked about previously. 